Okay, we are online now. Robin, please go ahead. To your okay. Presentation. Okay. Maybe well, say a little bit about yourself to let us get familiar with you. Oh, okay. Um, I'm a retired academic. Um, I started life as a mathematical physicist um, in research. Um, spent two years in the U.S. doing that. I came back to this country, found that physics wasn't in a very good state, so I became a teacher trainer uh, in mathematics and spent uh, quite some time doing that. Uh, eventually left to set up my own small business in IT, um, which was do I was doing that for about 10 years, something like that, and then I went back to um, um, the uh, academic world um, and uh, helped to set up a new uh, business department, which eventually became the uh, Winchester Business School. Um, and, and then I left that and, and um, joined the Open University uh, for a while, teaching for them, and also uh, doing a lot of teaching for Hull University, flying around the world, uh, teaching in Hong Kong, Bahrain, um, and various other places. Uh, so a very short biography. Okay, um, I as part of that, uh, and in, certainly in the last uh, years of th that teaching, I um, came a, came across uh, systems thinking, and um, one of the things that intrigued me was it seemed like there was a great muddle in systems thinking. Um, there were lots of approaches, lots of ways of looking at it. But I met um, in uh, quite early on, I met Stafford Beer and became very familiar with the VSM and that uh, way of approaching systems thinking, which seemed to me to be one of the, so I say, most rigorous to my mathematical minds, um, because it depended on the definition of a system, which was uh, an input process output. Uh, but it, of course, was um had a had a purpose so that the western um, world wasn't very keen on that um idea of it being uh, having a, a teleological underpinning um, and so that i think that the vsm is not very well appreciated because it is teleological in its roots as it were um but that's where i that's where i start from as one of my foundations. And uh, the slide that you can see now, I see as essentially um, the parallel, trying to draw the parallel between a community, which can be any group of people um, loosely organized, um, which wishes to survive in its, uh, in its world, just as an animal wishes to survive in its world. So I draw that parallel. There are, of course, great differences between an animal in its ecosystem and a community in its ecosystem. Um, but there are also similarities. Now, fundamentally, the similarity is that each um, would normally wish to survive. And therefore, that's the, that's the parallel that I draw. The differences, of course, are in the internal organization. For an animal, um, the internal organization is pretty well fixed. Um, of course, its brain is flexible, but the bodily parts are honed, and the way they relate together are honed by evolution. Whereas in a community, that's not the case. Um, that has to be part of the governing function, if you like, to worry about the way in which uh, people relate together, organizations relate together, people relate to organizations, all those all those things. So it's both the parallel and the differences that I that I want to uh, look at if you want. Um, but in both cases, we're thinking about processes. So my whole view is in terms of processes. We see a feedback loop here on on my first slide. and of course it's a cybernetic feedback loop where the animal or the community will adjust its uh, relationship, if I use that word, to the 
environment in which it exists. Um, I think there are some words here which are very important. Um, the one, the first is system and process, both of which are recursive words in the sense that a system can have subsystems, can be part of a super system, a process can have sub processes, and, and of course, and so this is why I choose the word community to look at um, governing, because community also can have sub communities. So it is a recursive word in the same way. And um, although we don't often think about it, purpose too is a recursive word. And that's also important in, in my the way I try and talk about things. Okay, so if I now move on, um, the second um, and perhaps most important is I've just laid this out as a rough analysis because I've uh, just set it up in terms of things which exist. So we can say there are communities of neighborhoods. We can say there are communities of towns and villages. We can say there are communities of nations. And of course, the whole thing exists within the community of life on planet Earth. So when you start looking at the whole um, problem of government, if you like, from a, from a process point of view, then you are thinking about the relationships between governing levels, as it were. And we have, you can see, this is a very rough diagram. Um, there are levels of uh, community. And there also must be levels of governing. So this is where we come back to the VSM, if you like. So when we start our process analysis, then we get this kind of picture, which is straightforward VSM um, process analysis, where the pattern repeats of a governing system governing governing a community or governing, in fact, sub-communities. In this case, I've sort of uh, identified three sub-communities. And below that, then there are governing systems uh, looking at and governing their sub-communities. So this is the standard VSM picture. Um, then, okay, if I now go on to look at the governing, no, where's it going here? Here we are. Um, if I take the standard viable system model um, management systems, then they they split into um, systems five, four, three, two, and, and three star. And system one is the collection of um, sub-communities which are being governed by this governing system. And so if we look at those um, one at a time and look at their function, the purpose of system five is to embody the being of the community. Um, it is the guardian of the identity and purpose of the community. This is exactly as is envisaged in the um, viable system model. And of course, in an animal that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't really exist. It exists a bit for human beings because we decide um, what we want to be. Um, and we have that choice, whereas most animals just are what they are, as it were. So most animals, it, this doesn't really apply to. This is one of the differences between human beings, I suppose, and uh, animals in their ecosystem. So system five, that's the purpose of system five, to, to embody the being of it, of the community of which it is part. Um, and so at the lowest recursive level, that can be all members of that community. At higher levels, well, we can we can have to think about this. And I'm not putting for this forward as, a, as an end result. It's thoughts. At high levels, representatives of the culture and attitudes of the community um, could be uh, some kind of house of representatives, uh, elected possibly, or um, chosen by um, sortition. And, and there, are, there are disadvantages and advantages of both those ways of doing things. So in a sense, this is the guardian of the community and the, its culture and its attitudes. And so 
when we think about the decisions taken by a house House of Representatives, they must be decisions on matters pertinent to the whole community. It can't be um, matters which are only, um, if you like, pertinent to a, one of the subcommunities, because that's the situation of that of that particular subcommunity. So, for a democracy, as far as I'm concerned, anyway, you have to restrict the uh, ability of the higher levels to decide as well as, of course, restricting what the, the lower levels can do. So there are restrictions on both. And, and in fact, I mean, if you look at most governance in this world in which we live, that is not the case. Higher levels of governing tend to steamroller over the lower levels. But if you're gonna have a real democracy, then that cannot be the case. System four, the purpose of system four is to monitor the environment in a learning feedback loop and propose changes that it feels are necessary for the continuing viability of the community. As the world evolves outside the community, so the community needs to change its relationship to that outside world in order to keep its stability, if you like, its viability intact. Every person has a skill and expertise and should be able to contribute to the viability of a community. So to better encompass the variety disposed by a community, I suggest a register of expertise constituencies should be constructed and people chosen to represent their community at those higher levels um, in exactly the same way that we choose people to sit within a uh, System five, we need them to sit within system four. It's a very long time since we were a fairly uniform country, um, agriculturally based. There are all sorts of an, an in, almost infinite variety of skills which need to be represented. And just representing the areas within a community uh, re representing the subcommunity within a community is not sufficient any longer. We need we need expertise, skill to be represented, and a body to be doing that. And its job is to monitor the environment in a learning feedback loop and propose changes that it feels are necessary for the continuing viability of the community. System three and system three star. The purpose of system three is to maintain the whole community view in engaging with and managing the sub-communities, steering the internal system in line with the external environments. It also contributes to the whole system view to system two, which I'll come to in a moment, in establishing the social frame and engages with system four in feeding back the state of the sub-communities, successes and problems so that there, there can be discussions on how you know, proposed changes will be made to the whole thing. So what's, what's most important is the next, okay. Um, first of all, system three is the executive arm of the governing system. And I suggest the chief executive is appointed by the House of Representatives and is responsible to the House of Representatives. System three star is simply the auditing arm of system three to ensure that the sub-communities are um, doing what they say they're doing, if you like. Auditing is necessary, uh, very necessary part of almost any organization. So uh, where I was going, first of all, um, system four, the house of expertise, and system three, the executive. So the house of expertise has the knowledge of the dynamics of the external world, System three has the knowledge of the dynamics of the internal world, and they must therefore converse to, um, if you like, to inform each other of the state of the viability of the community and answer the question, are the efforts of the citizens aligned with the future evolution of, of the environment? So that's an important discussion. And the results of that discussion are then proposed to system five, uh, which makes the decisions on change. 
So this is the heart of a feed forward control system whose purpose is to ensure that the community remains viable in a changing world. Proposals for necessary community change arise from this conversation and I propose to system five for decision making. Now we said that there are um, at the beginning that there are possible response systems. So in an animal in an environment, it's got the possibility of fight or flight in, in the very crudest terms. So we need a, a number of possible response systems. And these are like some of the sub communities. You might want um, to, or most communities will want to maintain a food system and um, they might maintain a, um, well, let's, I don't know what it might be, but um, let's say an energy, man, an energy production system. Um, and it's clear in the current world that we're in the middle of a switch from one way of producing energy to another way of producing energy. So in our possible response systems, we'll need to change one response system, uh, wind that one down and build another one up. So one of the things we might want to do in order to keep up with the way that the environment is changing, those sorts of um, response changes. Multiple processes constructing the required output for survival given the nature of the environmental input. Now, if I come to fish system two, um, the purpose of system two is threefold. System two is perhaps the most complex. Um, and I haven't really got time to go into the details of that, but I'm happy to supply the paper on which this is based which does go in some to some extent into detail, outlining the detail of how this might work. So the purpose is threefold, to maintain the balance between the sub-communities, that is ensuring that no community seeks to optimize itself, destroying the overall balance of those sub-communities. And secondly, to put in place any additional legal framework required to maintain internal coherence and viability, which facilitates the third purpose, that is the appropriate support of the culture and values of that community. So this is quite complex. Um, and um, okay. But um, and What's complex about it is to the relationships between the levels. I mean, if, if you like, um, each of the sub-communities will exist within a framework which is defined by it, or those, those subsystems, and the in conjunction with the overall community. So the sub-communities and the community will, uh, if you like, draw up and, and uh, develop their framework within which the sub-communities work in order to maintain the viability of that whole community and, of course, the viability of the, of the sub-communities. And, and so they've got that existing at that level. If that now becomes something that is um, in the way, as it were, then there must be ways in which that can be changed. And so this is my paper is what I go on further to try and investigate it, to investigate and see how that would work and how that would work over three levels. So you've got the, the defined uh, one, which is if not working, if you like, um, the proposals for changing that must go up to the next level. Um, and, and so there must be interchange in that in order to, um, change the levels of to change the framework itself. So this is a very complex and important part. Formally, of course, it's the legal system, but it's a legal system which must allow um, um, cultural differences, so that um, if you like different parts of the world, if you go right to to the world level must be allowed to develop their own way of um, existing within the world in the way they see the world. So there must be those those differences. You must be able to maintain those differences. As in, and as far as I can see, 
that's easily possible within this kind of structure. Um, I think that's, I, I, mean, I don't know how I'm doing for time, but <laughs> um, if people want to ask questions, then I'm happy to answer. Questions? Uh, I, I would start with what happened to system one? I mean, what, this is supposed to be about democracy and I, I don't see anything in these about democracy. Um, system system one is the community itself. And this is the, the government, I'm talking about the government of the community. So I'm focusing on the government of the community. And but the way- still, in which... That's individuals. That has to be individuals. I mean- Indeed. Indeed. Normative values of the people in system one don't don't count in your theory? They 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 determine everything. How? Um, by uh, in, if you are talking about say let's go to the bottom on the, the neighborhood level, then these functions of um, system five four three two are functions which everybody takes part in, so that um, the decisions that are come to are come to as a result of those uh, conversations. If we talk about the um, a higher level, then they elect representatives or they um, or representatives are chosen in some fashion which represent a particular sub-community. And this is a very much le uh, uh, leveled structure. So it has many levels. The neighborhood, um, uh, yeah, I think. Okay, but let me say that uh, I guess I first uh, proposed a, a model of health human health from a molecular perspective uh, back in the late 90s. And so I'm quite familiar with your overall systems view. And yeah. I think you've developed it very nicely and are articulated it very well. Okay. So don't take my opposition here as, as no, no. But, but what I think is confusing me uh, is if I tried to put mathematical functions on this, I would be screwed royally because I don't have an initial conditions for the system. And those initial um, conditions would necessarily be functors mapping from system one to fifth system two. I'm not sure that you can, but I mean, I don't, I've never seen um, uh, a mathematical, uh, uh, what can I say, a mathematical scheme which would enable the, to, to encompass the complexity of what we're talking about. Well, that's because um, that would define the initial conditions as individuals. Um, well, initial people come into the world um, and grow within their community in, 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 and take part in that community. They learn um, the, I mean, they, they inherit the genes and they learn from their parents and their teachers and their, their friends I, and neighbors. I, I, I can hear completely, but how do you formalize that? I, I think I might be able to play. Sure. Yeah, please ask the question. Yeah, hi. Well, uh, thank you so much, Robin. This is very timely for me. Um, so some of the work that I do involves youth-led ethnographic qualitative research in school communities. And on Saturday, I, my feet touched the ground um, on Menominee land in Wisconsin, very close to Lake Michigan in Milwaukee. Milwaukee is a historically segregated city. And I just happened to go to a, um, an event between two museums, one on, on Saturday, and it it was telling the story of community gardens. So it's called growing resistance. So if we use this as a model, so now I think, wow, uh, what we're doing with this little nonprofit called the Source School in, in the state of Maine with um, fishermen's kids and lobstermen's kids in the North and then the city kids in the South in Portland or in Freeport and how fun it was for them to meet after having this systems awareness-based experience. I'm thinking, well, 
let's do it through community gardens. Yep. So if you think of a community garden community as the system, it's intergenerational. Yep. The kids were putting down their phones for once and talking to the elders and explaining stories. So Jerry, I'm wondering if to bring it back to math. So I, I work with a lot of Waldorf teachers and in Waldorf, they introduce in terms of math operations. I taught public school K-12, English is a new language and language acquisition stuff for decades. In, in early uh, education class in math, they teach addition first and additive mm -hmm. property. In Waldorf, they teach division. So we know we learn more than math in math class. We learn that we're arranged in rows. We learn we have to raise our hands to get up to ask to go use the bathroom. So I'm excited about this in terms of what it could mean because my task or joy in this nonprofit is to start um, research and collaboration circles, international research and collaboration circles. And I have a vision of young people working with scholars, published authors, and, and being part of these research projects. This is related, Jason, you know, to the archiving project in ASC, my view. So if you think in terms of math operations, perhaps, rather than straight applied equations, I think it might be more a way in to bridge this idea that I think is very interesting, Jerry, about oh. operations. Thank you, Lisa. And I was particularly interested that you uh, cited the Waldorf uh, schools, uh, which is quite interesting to me. Uh, but yes, uh, your comments are, are quite appropriate. And then indeed, I was thinking of math operations. And particularly, I was thinking of the uh, metaphysics of mm. mathematics uh, and the separate. And now I'm citing a, a, a man by the name of Pfifferman, who was a logician, a metaphysical logician, if you would. Uh, but Pfifferman, uh, his notion of, uh, of the language of mathematics, mm -hmm. he separates out terms that are pre-mathematical and pre-logical as opposed to those terms that are mathematical and logical. And wow. this, this terminology difference is precisely where I was headed in the discussion uh, with Professor Aspie. Yeah, and Jerry, where that lights me up is one, is yeah, Waldorf, just like uh, Robin was saying, there's, um, I mean, I'm finding ways to talk about spirituality in secular terms. So Waldorf does by including the earth and seasons and, and the um, star stuff that we are, um, it's it's in the pedagogy. Um, and where that lights me up too is around the language. So when Robin was talking about um, diversity of language and values, because you can't separate them in law, in legalese, well, legalese in its current state is designed to keep the status quo, the power over structures. So it would take, I mean, Robin, uh, that would be a big job. And I would love, I mean, I'm past the nation state philosophy. Lisa, I always was, yeah. Jason, Lisa, yeah. You, you are welcome to bring the young kids to here to challenge <laughs> the old professors, yeah. retired That's guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean it. You can, if you can bring some of them here and uh, we will be forced to... Mm to dialogue with them, and then that will be good for the club. But uh, uh, Slava had a raised hand. You, yeah, you... thanks so much for this. Thank you. That'll be, uh, as we say in Yiddish, alavai. Yeah, alavai. <laughs> thanks. Slava? Uh, uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, uh, Robin, uh, is it uh, right in uh, your uh, framework uh, that uh, minimal uh, system one is uh, community, uh, not uh, individual? Uh, for example, uh, two persons uh, with uh, conversation uh, between uh, each yeah, other. You, you can certainly take it down to the individual. Um, I think in the first place, that's where, uh, for me, democracy starts 
with the way in which you as an individual um, relate to the people around you. And um, democracy, if you like, starts in, in exactly that place. So that the neighborhood uh, getting together to decide what happens in your neighborhood, in your um, garden, um, is exactly how we must, um, if you like, learn democracy. Because I don't think we do a very good job at the moment. Um, but there are many places in the in the world which uh, this kind of thing happens. I mean, I was been I've been part of, um, you know, I, I setting up uh, an organisation to look after people or and look after a town. I've done things like trying to rescue a defunct um, a derelict college, um, but this just takes people talking to each other in order to work together to want to achieve, to achieve something. And I think that's the important that's the important starting point with the world. Uh, okay, okay, I agree, but uh, it seems uh, for me that uh, uh, comments by Jerry uh, shows uh, us uh, some uh, paradox of uh, systems uh, consideration. Uh, uh, the uh, view which uh, starts from individual uh, can't be a holistic view, uh, in uh, my opinion. Could, could you okay. repeat what you just said? I didn't understand uh, what you said, Slava. Could you repeat what you said? Uh, uh, the view which uh, starts from the individual uh, can't be uh, a holistic view uh, to democracy. Mm. Uh, so, so we should uh, start uh, not from uh, individual, but uh, from uh, the smallest uh, community in a holistic uh, perspective. You mean something like a neighborhood? Okay, let's let's listen to the other presentations. Uh, Arend and Salava, uh, which one you want to go next? Uh, okay, okay, and uh, I should... Uh, okay, you go, should, you go uh, second. Okay, yes, 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 Please. yes, yes.